Hello! In this lesson, we're going to continue drawing what we were doing in the last video. Now, what we're going to do is join all the layers into one illustration. For that, what we have to do is press Ctrl, Shift, Alt, and E. Pressing all these combinations creates a new layer that composes all of the other layers. Now, in this layer, what we're going to have to do is go to Image, Settings, and Desaturize. Now in this layer what we have is the image in a grayscale, where we can really see the difference in planes. Regarding these differences in planes, we're going to get the images we had as references, and let's get drawing, but just in grays. To draw in grays, what I do is to use the dropper tool and go along selecting the tones I already have in the image. Now. The brush we're going to use is going to be just as much a brush as an eraser. This is because we're going to go selecting each of the colors that we have around the painting and painting on top. Remember that using the dropper tool is the best option for this case. It's much easier to go straight into it with tones we have than to look for the right ones from scratch from your own color range. What we find in this image is that with long fat strokes, we can really see what we're talking about in the drawing. We're not really interested with a lot of detail and just something loose that'll help us understand what we're talking about. If you need to, you can fool the eye a little using tones that shouldn't be on this plane. For example, with the wheel, I'm going to use darker tones than what this plane really needs, just to make the image pop. We're going to continue painting the scene, little by little. I'll add in some details with shadows and light. What we're going to do is use the dropper to select the shadows and lights that we have close to our drawing but that don't contrast too much in each of the planes. And we're going to redraw from there. If you're having problems establishing lights and shadows, take an image, a photo, or an illustration and base your elimination on what they do in their scene. In this way, you can learn a lot about lights and shadows. We don't have to do everything from our own imagination. Using references on other things or other people is always going to help us learn and grow. A trick to see lights and shadows better is to squint your eyes when you look at your drawing. In this way, you can quickly see the changes in planes. And it's going to be much easier to see if anything contrasts too much or is in a tone it shouldn't be. What happens when you squint your eyes is sim you simplify the image, and this way you can make see the mistakes or what you have right a lot better and much faster. Now, I'm going to move all the images and fast forward so you don't get too bored watching the drawing process. You do have to give the scene a little bit more details using the shadows and lights that we have. There'll be areas where you need to highlight a little with light and others where you'll have to contrast with shadows. You're going to have to work this out with your own eye. We're going to try and make the sides of some of the objects a little more defined than others. For example, the ones in the first plane are some we want to be a little more defined than the ones at the back. It's just a question of what we would see first if we were actually in the scene. Lastly, I always think it's nice to add in some kind of brightness to the first planes. Seeing as we have a very dark color in first planes, if we apply that brightness, we highlight the areas and make them just a little bit brighter. Now, to give it some color, we're going to create a new layer of tone and saturation on top of the layer we have. In this new layer, we're going to hit color and choose the color we want to use as the main tone of our image. 
In my case, I'm going to select a reddish orange tone. I'm going to saturate a little bit. On top of this one, I'm going to create a color layer. This new layer will be in color mode. Now, we'll paint on top of the scene, respecting the gray tonalities that we had before, but now they're going to modify the color. For example, in this case, we want an orange tone in the sky, so we're going to select an orange tone. Try to make it so it isn't too saturated, because when we saturate the color a lot in the selection, it will show up even more saturated in the image. We need a sort of intermediate range. Now, what you can do is use a different color on each of the objects in the scene. For example, you can use the dark brown on boxes or one a little lighter. You can use a tone that's moving to green or yellow. That depends on how you want your scene to look. When you're painting, it shouldn't be too difficult to respect the lines, as we don't have the layers separated in the planes. For that, we're going to need to be careful when applying the colors and with the edges and the limits of each object. Don't worry if the tones you're using don't harmonize completely. We're going to create another layer later with a saturated tone, and we're going to go back to harmonize all of the colors in a new layer. This exercise can be done as many times as you want. With exercise, I mean painting and going back to harmonize the colors with a tone and saturation layer. It's a really helpful trick if you don't want to use the colors at first glance and you want the range to harmonize in a filter. However, it's always a good eye exercise to try and make the colors appear in a natural way. So to say, you can select them straight away and paint on them in the image. This way, you'll learn a lot more Try the different techniques. Try drawing it by using your eyes or try it with filters. You'll see the difference between both things and you can learn a lot about yourself and that's what the journey we're really on, right guys? As I've said before, once we have more or less the image painted, what we're going to do is to create a new tone and saturation layer on top of this one that is painted. And in this layer, we're going to press color and we're going to select a generic color that we want for this image. We can saturate the color however we want and later take away the opacity and turn it down a bit. Just enough for the colors to show up and be filtered through the tone that we have selected. We've changed the brush because what we're going to do is to make the edges of the drawing more defined. The brush we selected is a little softer, so we can control the inking of the edges better. Little by little, I'm going to select all of the elements that we have in the first plane, and I'm going to define each of the edges. As you can see, they look a little undone, so we have to define them well. We're going to go over the entire image, but I'm mostly interested in the elements on the first plane. Okay, so here we can see how it looks when we're finished with the edges. Now we're going to continue applying the color to more areas. What I'm going to do now is to select uh, an orange tone to paint the sky. In the part of the sky where I want the sun to be, using the soft brush and taking advantage of, of being able to zoom in on my drawing, I'm going to paint all of the area around the poster. I'm more interested in seeing the sun in this part, so I'm going to paint this area slowly.
I'm also quite interested in having the floor painted. In this part of the floor, we're going to add in some purple tones that it contrasts with the yellow in the sky. Try to make the strokes you use on the floor to have style. I mean, while we're drawing, we need the shapes to look nice and to harmonize. I'm going to apply different purple tones so they contrast. I like to add chromatic richness to the image. Most of all, using complementary colors, in this case, purples and oranges. To paint the light in the mountains at the back, I'm going to use an orange tone to contrast with the purple we have in the mountains. This orange will border all of them and give a very interesting color to the light. Now, on the poster, we can paint the letters, make the word bar. This way, we can understand that we're near a bar in the Western world that we've created. Any details like these extras are always going to enrich in your drawing. Continue adding strokes of color and observe the result. As you can see, we've added some tones of color around the image. Now it's much richer and full of content. This is what we really wanted from the start. Now what I'm going to do is to create a new layer and I'm going to put it on heavy light mode. This way I can give tones of strong light where the sun would be. With the brush in soft mode and with the yellow color we had before, you can see the light on the poster and the sky. This brush in light mode is going to help us to apply little lights along the whole image. Look around the bottle, the boxes, and I'm going to apply little areas of light to all of the elements the sun reflects off of. We're going to do the same with the mountains, the wheel, on the water bucket, the poster, all the areas that need a heavy spot of light. This is what the drawing is going to look like when we're done applying the lights. As you can see, it looks great. We add some white light as well around a lot of the lights we've created. In this way, we're going to add kind of like a chromatic richness. Okay, so there we have our image. That was super easy, right? Super simple to create a scene from scratch. Now you can do the same thing with your own drawings at home, using these lessons we've seen in this course. Remember that you have the toolpad platform, okay? Where you can put up your work and both teachers and students can see them and opinionate on them because that's always good. Also, you can, we can help you through the platform. Okay, so I really hope you liked this and I hope you learned a ton. I'll see you in the next course, okay? Bye!